Hi, I'm Dr. Bryson Payne, Associate Professor of Computer Science here at North Georgia. Today I'm going to take you through an intro to programming in JavaScript using a game example. To get the most out of this tutorial, you need to have a little bit of HTML knowledge, but you can be a complete novice to JavaScript. We're going to take you through an example the way I learned to program, typing in a, a game example and then going from there to understand small pieces of the program as we go. We're going to do this example together and turn this into a lab for Computer Science 1250. First I'm going to note two tools that you'll need to complete this tutorial or any program from programming in JavaScript for a web browser. First of all you'll need a good text editor. For PCs Notepad2 or TextPad are good examples of text editor programs that work well with HTML and JavaScript. For the Mac, you can use Text Wrangler, and that's what I'll be using today. For your browser, you can choose any browser. Chrome, Firefox, Internet Explorer, Safari. They'll all work equally well with the basic HTML and JavaScript we'll be producing today. I've created a sample file for you out at my website, brysonpain.com. If you'll go into the Samples directory and the CS1250, directory, you'll find guessing.html. It's the start of our guessing game. We'll build out the rest together. Here we are at the sample file website, brysonpaincom slash samples slash CS1250, and we have the guessing.html example game. You can see that this is the shell for a simple guessing game to guess a number between 1 and 100. If you'll view the source of this page, by holding down control and clicking or on a PC right click and come down to view page source. You'll be able to see a simple HTML file that has a title Dr. Payne's guessing game. We can see that in our browser window right up here and then a small body with just a simple form with three inputs. We can see what those look like here on the screen. We've got an input text field, we've got a button, and then we've got another text field below. We'll use the first text field to enter our guess. We'll click our button when we're ready to check that guess, and then we'll output some information to our third blank here that I've labeled output. If you don't quite understand the form yet, you're going to be alright for the first JavaScript project. But for right now, we just want to copy this and paste it over into our text editor. So let's highlight all of the text in the source for this page. Copy it. And let's paste it in to our text editor. This is the first of the two tools I mentioned that we'd need. The text editor is the first requirement. Second, we're going to need an internet browser, a web browser. As you can see, I've got this pasted as new text. I'm going to save this. As a new file. And I'll call this guessing game. HTML. And I'm going to save this into my documents. I need to remember where I'm saving my file because I'll need to keep open two files to make this game work. I'm going to use my text editor to edit the file and add some programming and I'll use my browser to view the results and test the game. There we go. Once you've got this file saved, and if you can't get to the <clears throat> 
If you couldn't get to this file from the web, I'm going to leave the text up on the screen just for a moment. Pause the video here if you need to type in this small section of HTML into your text editor. All right, now that you've got the text entered, we've got this saved as guessinggame.html to our documents folder. We just have to be able to find that to work with it in our web browser. I'm going to come down to my documents and open that guessing game in my browser window. I'll know that I'm working with the local version of this file because it has the name I just gave the file, guessinggame.html, and I can see that it's coming from my local computer. You'll see something like file C if you're working on a PC or file localhost if you're working on a Mac. So once we've got these two components, we can switch back and forth between our text editor and Chrome. You may even want to open these up side by side. Let's first just make sure that we're editing the right file by changing the title and the heading to your names, guessing game. and save the file. You'll always need to save your file, then switch back to your browser and refresh, reload that file. And you should see your changes. Good, once you've got that working, we're going to switch back to the text editor and begin to build our game. One of the great things about JavaScript is that it allows us to add interactivity to a web page. So users can interact, they can touch the page, they can click, they can enter values. When you go to Amazon and use one-click ordering or order a book of any kind, you've got a form that you're able to interact with a web server uh, through and it allows you to purchase your books. What we're going to do with this simple example is create a guessing game so that the user can enter a guess between 1 and 100 until they get it right. So first of all, we need to add the ability for that button to listen for a click so that when the user types something into the guess field, they can click on the button. Well, the event handler for that is on click, and we're going to set it equal to a function that we're about to create. We'll call it check guess. We're typing this directly into the input tag for the button called that has the uh, text guess on it. So when someone clicks this button, they're going to go to a function called check guess. I mentioned a function. We're actually going to program some JavaScript here. So we're going to say script up in our head of our document, script language equals JavaScript. And we'll skip a few lines and we'll go ahead and close that script tag. Let's go ahead and set up a simple function and in JavaScript the keyword is function, check guess, and we gather a block of code together in JavaScript with curly braces. These curly braces are on your keyboard next to the P key, and they're the shift, the uh, uppercase of the square brackets. For now, let's just make sure that we're actually getting some interaction through this button. Let's pop up an alert box. An alert is just a pop-up box that confirms or tells the user something. So we're going to say, through an alert box, we'll pop up a box that says, you clicked. 
save your file, switch to your browser window, refresh the browser page, and then click on your guest button. And you will see a pop-up that says, you clicked. If you don't have that button, check three things. First of all, check your code here in the input for the button, in the input tag. Check your code here in the head of the document. We've created a script, Language Equals JavaScript, with a function called check guess. And uppercase and lowercase do matter in JavaScript. If you say check guess in all lowercase in your on click, you've got to say check guess in all lowercase in your function. And the alert needs a semicolon at the end. We use the semicolon at the end of a single line statement in JavaScript. Next, make sure you've saved the file. And finally, make sure you've refreshed the file from disk to get the newest version. When we click, we get a pop-up that says, you clicked. Well, our game's not very interesting yet. But now that we know that we can receive clicks from this button, we can do something a little more interesting. The name of this file is Guessing Game, so I think we would want to create a number between 1 and 100. The way we declare a variable, or something that can change over the course of the program, in our case we want a new number every time we load the page or every time we play the game. We want a new random number. I'm going to call my variable the number. This is the number we'll be trying to guess. And I'm going to set it equal to a function math.floor parenthesis math.random times 100 plus 1. Now this may seem like a lot of magic or a lot of math to put into a single line. But what this does is creates a variable for us in JavaScript called the number and it sets that equal to a rounded number, the floor function rounds down. Our number will be a random number. Math.random creates a random number between zero and, one, uh, zero and one. We multiply that by 100 to get a number between zero and just less than 100, and we add one to make sure that we'll get a number between one and 100 inclusive. Now that seems like a lot of work, to get just a single random number, but we can make sure that we actually got a random number by changing our alert pop-up window to say what that number was. Because I called my variable the number, I can pop up an alert and tell the user what that number was. So I'm going to save this file. I'm going to Get back into my browser window, refresh one more time, and now I'm going to click guess. And I should get the number that I generated. In this case, I got 61. If I reload the page and click guess again, I'll get a new number because this script is going to run every time the user reloads the page. Reload, click guess, and I see a different number, 27. If I click the Guess button twice without reloading, I get the same number back. In my case, 27 will continue to appear until I refresh the screen. That's important to know because the user is going to click Guess. Let's say they guess 50 the first time. It's going to compare that 50 to 27, and we'll say whether we're too high or too low. If I didn't get the same number every time I clicked the guess, I'd be checking against a different number every time, and that wouldn't be a very fair game for our user. So let's go back to our text editor. And instead of setting an alert for the number, I actually want to see what the user has guessed. So I'm going to create 
a variable that will give me access to this guess text field. I'm going to create a variable that I'll call guess and I'm going to access that using the document object model. We'll learn more about what this means over the next few weeks but I'm going to say document dot get element by ID parenthesis single quote guess and what this is going to allow us to do is access the contents of this guess input field. I'm going to create another variable called my number that's going to look inside this guess field and get the value out of it. I do that with guess.value. Now if I change my alert one more time to pop up my number in the window, then whatever I've typed into the guess field should be what I see in my pop-up window. So I'll save my file with these three lines changed. I'll swap back to my browser window and refresh. Now I'll type 50 into my guessing box and click guess. And it says 50. If I type 75 and click guess, I see 75. So I've proved that I can access both the random number that I generate when I reload this page and I can access the contents of this text field. My guess. If I can get to both those numbers, I can start checking to see if my guess is too high, too low, or if I got the number right. So let's do that with our first if statement. An if statement allows us to compare two things to see if they're equal, less than, greater than, see how they relate to one another, or check a condition. So I'm going to say if, and then parenthesis for my condition, I'll say if my number is less than the number then I'm going to set an alert that says too low. Try again. And I'll tab this alert out just to keep it grouped with the if statement. So if my number is less than the number that was generated on the page, I'll pop up a window saying too low, try again. So I'm going to save my document, change to my browser, reload one more time, and now I can check this by guessing a number that I know is going to be too low, zero. That's too low. Try again. Notice if I type 101 though, I know that cannot be too low for a number between 1 and 100. If I click guess, nothing should happen. But if I click zero, or any number less than whatever my random number might be, I'm going to get too low, try again. And here's that code one more time. Well, now that I can check my guesses, I know I'm going to have to guess several times to get the number right on average, uh, maybe as many as seven or eight times. I don't want to have a pop-up window coming up every time I click on my number, whether it's too high or too low. 
So what I'm going to do is set up another variable called output and it's going to look just like the line before it document dot get element by ID the spelling and capitalization matter parenthesis single quote output single quote close parenthesis semicolon what this does for us is gives us access to this output text field that we created lower down on the page. This output text field now can be accessed through our variable output, just like we got the guess out of guess.value. We can change the output text fields text by using output.value. So I'm going to change my if statement slightly. And instead of popping up an alert, I'm going to comment that line out. Two slashes before a line will allow me to comment whatever's on that row. That means that line will not be executed anymore. But I can leave it there for debugging later if I need to. Now I can say output.value equals to low. Please try again. And if I've done this correctly, I've got my document.getElementById, that's a capital E, capital B, capital I, lowercase d. If I've got this variable output pointed correctly to my output input field, my text field, then when I say output.value equals too low, please try again. Instead of getting a pop-up window, I'll get text in the document itself. So I'm going to save. I'm going to change back to my Chrome window. I'm going to refresh. And now if I guess zero, I'll see too low, please try again in the text field that I called output. And here's that code. We've handled one of the cases where my number is too low. I've guessed less than the random number that was generated in the game. I want to handle another case. And in this case, I'm going to say, I know it wasn't too low because if I'm getting to this point, then I did not guess too low. I'm going to say otherwise or else if my number is greater than the number and this time I'm going to output too high. Please try again. So let's see how both of those work. Take a look at the code one last time. Make sure you save it. Switch back to your browser window. Make sure you reload. Let's guess zero. That's too low. Let's guess 101. That should be too high. If I guess a number somewhere in between, I can find out where my number falls. 50 is too high, so I would guess lower. But right now, I don't have a way to check to see if I've actually guessed the correct number. I've got one more case. Else, if my number is equal to the number 
For the greater than and less than symbols, those kind of made sense. When we test for equality, we use two equal signs. You notice that when we want to change something, like we want to change the output value, we use the single equal sign. This is called assignment. So I set something equal to something else. I assign a value to it. I put too low, please try again, into the output field's text value. When I'm testing to see if two things are equal, I use this conditional operator, two equal signs, together. So if I get to this point, I'm going to be pretty sure, actually I'll be certain, that I've guessed the correct number. So in this case, I'll just say output.value equals you got the number. You win. Take just a moment to get that code. Pause me if you need to. Come back to your browser window after you've saved. Reload your browser window. And let's play our game. I'm going to use something called a binary search. I'm going to guess halfway uh, through the list of possible values every time. Let me show you how that works. I guess 50, that's too high. I half the difference. I know my number has to be between 0 and 50, or between 1 and 50, so I'm going to guess 25. That's still too high. I'm going to half that range again. 12 is too low. So I go about halfway between 12 and 25, 18 or 19. That's too high. So it's between 13 and 17, I guess 15. That's too high. I've only got two possibilities, 13. And the number is 14. I got the number. I win. And I've successfully tested all three of our cases. If I reload my page, it's just like playing the game all over again. I can guess 50. This time I'll get a different number from 14. Now that's too low. So I need to go to 75. Still too low. 87. 93. I'm between 87 and 93. I'm going to go to 90. That's too high. I've got either 88 or 89. I guess 89 first. And I won. Well, I'd like to do something more for my winners besides just change the text field here. So what I'm going to do is come back to my text editor. And in addition to outputting, you got the number you win. I'm going to use my alert. The number was, and I can actually output that number, the number, by adding it to my text. The number was plus the number. You win. will pop up a window that says the number was, and whatever the random number was, and you win. Let's save this and do it again. I'll refresh my page. And now I'll start with 50. I'll do this one a little faster. So I know I'm either 73, uh, and that was the number. The number was 73. You win. The way this stands right now, I have a fully playable game. I can guess a number between 1 and 100. 
Every time I reload the page, I'll get a new number, but as long as I stay on the page, I know that number is going to be the same one I just won with. If I refresh, 73, it's probably not going to be that number again. But if I want to make this game able to be played multiple times, I just have to make one more change. Let's say that I don't want to have to reload after I win, I just want to start playing again. I can add just one more section here to change that number to a new random number. In my case, I'm just going to copy the last part of this line, the number equals, and this math function that gives me a number between 1 and 100, <clears throat> but I will not copy the variable declaration. I don't need to recreate this number, I just need to set it equal to a new random number. So I'm going to copy that section of code and paste it into my winning case. When you add that line below, and we'll add a little clue that they can play again from the same screen. We're going to save this file. We're going to switch back over to our browser. We're going to reload. And now I can guess 50. 37, 47. My number was 47. I'm going to play again. I noticed that I cut off a little bit of my text there. I'll fix that here in just a moment. But let me show that 47 is not the right number a second time. If you've got this version of the game functioning correctly, you've got all of the elements you need for our next lab. The next step that I'm going to ask you to work through with me will be a section on adding a counting algorithm to count how many guesses a player used. But we'll do that as our next tutorial. So if you've got this game com correctly working, and you can recheck your code one more time, I'll show the top section. Pause it if you need it. And the bottom section. The last thing we changed was check guess. You may want to expand your text field so it'll be large enough to show a longer line of text like this. That's your option. Once you have this working, save this and upload it to Vista to let me know that you got this fully functional with your name in the title and we will get ready for our next lab.